Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Like, comment, and share, as well as subscribe to our channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more video content. G'day Grade 12s, once again looking at question 8 of the same paper, EC September 2019. This is our galvanic cell question. We have question 8, the diagram given below shows a galvanic cell set up under standard conditions. We see in half cell, we have half cell A, half cell B, we can identify there's a salt bridge connected to a, what looks like a voltmeter, or it should be a voltmeter. And we have a platinum electrode by the looks of it and an iron electrode. 8.1 says write down two functions of the salt bridge. Well, the functions of a salt bridge do include um, the following. They just asked to give us two. But one of the most um, simplest and easiest to remember is the fact that it completes the circuit. All right, so we just... Oh. Spelled complete wrong there. There we go. It completes the circuit. Okay, that's number one. And this is how you would write your answer. It completes the circuit. And we can give another reason. Um, I think there's about three reasons, but we just need to give two. And the one that I'm going to choose is keeps the reactants separate, allowing electrons to transfer keeps the reactants separate to allow indirect or to allow for indirect just using a bit more words to get my point across allow for indirect transfer of electrons or just to allow for transfer of electrons okay Usually when it comes to exams, they expect their answers to be a little bit more full, fuller. So if you can, uh, I would suggest to use a bit more words. Not obviously just words, but words that will suit the definition to get your point across. In 8.2, which half cell A or B contains the cathode? Now, usually when it comes to this, we need to look at our electrodes and judging on the values of the cell potential values, can we decide which um, half cell A or B would be our cathode? So it looks like we've got a um, platinum electrode here and iron electrode here. So what we're going to do, we're just going to scroll down to our table of standard reductions. Uh, potentials, I like to use table 4A. You can either use 4A or 4B. And if I find platinum over here, PT, I see it has a value of cell potential value of positive 1,20. Ah, apologize for that. And if I look for iron, Fe, I'm gonna start at the top again and just scroll through. Okay, here we go. I got the iron Fe2 plus, plus 2E, and, uh, or two electrons rather over here. And I see it has a value of negative four of negative 0 0.44 rather. Well, that means according to our um, values here, we've got a positive value and a negative value. So we know that a negative cell potential value here would determine the fact that that would be our anode and a positive would mean our cathode. So because we have a positive value here for platinum, we go back to the question, which half cell A or B contains the cathode? Well, it's definitely according to those values Platinum having a positive value there, so we know it is half cell A. All right. 8.3.2, or just 8.3 rather. Write down the balance equation for the overall net reaction. Okay, so we know that our cathode is what looks like, um, because we have a cathode electrode, I mean a platinum electrode there. But the definitely the substance that we are that's present in half cell A is Br2 liquid, and then it goes to Br minus in aqueous solution. Okay, so we actually that's going to be included in our um, that, well, that's the substance that we can see that is um, being um, reduced here. 
okay uh, because half cell a is our um, cathode so we can definitely see that substance being reduced okay so we have to go back to our table and we have to go and find where is PR so we just go to our table and we find um, here we go we got BR2 here plus 2e gives us BR minus okay and that also confirms that that is also the cathode because it's a positive 1 comma 0 7 okay so that confirms that it is the cathode so this substance or this half cell is going to be or this uh, half reaction is going to be used and not the platinum one okay and um, because platinum is not being reduced here platinum is not gaining the electrons rather but the substance is and then we had iron at the bottom so iron was our anode so that was oxidized okay so I'm just going to decrease my pen size here quickly and here we have iron so that oxidized so that is Fe becomes Fe 2 plus plus two electrons here and then we have this one over here which is br2 plus 2e and that gives us um, 2 uh, br um, minus so they ask us to write oh my bad i see oh we're using that fe3 plus i apologize everybody i thought there was a two let me just go correct that quickly it's the Fe3 plus, so um, that 2 plus there must just be a 3. Okay. okay. So, lesson for everybody as well that's watching the video is just to make sure of your substances because you can make a mistake as easily as that to choose the wrong um, uh, half reaction. Okay. So, it's the Fe3 plus. So, we can see here that definitely our reactions are not balanced. So, we need to get all, we need to balance the electrons so we're going to multiply this equation by uh, 3 and we're going to multiply this equation by 2 to get on this side a equation of 2Fe goes to uh, 2Fe 3 plus plus 6 electrons here and on this side we'll have um, 3Br2 plus 6 electrons that's going to give us um, 6br minus all right we know these cancel and we begin to write down our net equation you'll keep the same color but I'm going to switch color obviously we know that we write down oxidation first on the top so we write down 2fe and everything on the left plus 3br2 and everything on the right, we have 2Fe3 plus plus 6Br, see that? Minus. All right. And this is our final net equation. All right. This was just the working behind it. They just asked you for the net um, um, equation or net reaction, rather. So if you work this out in pencil and went straight to this as your final answer in pen, that would have been acceptable. That's where the marks are coming from. All right. Um, but this is the method. I just showed you the method for obtaining the net reaction. 8.4, simple one, calculate the initial EMF of the cell. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my orange color. In 8.4, so we write down the formula. The EMF of the cell is equal to the EMF at the cathode minus EMF at the anode all right so we know that at the cathode that was positive 1 comma 0 7 for the substance BR all right and we're going to minus all right now because we need to just go and pick the um, right half reaction which was the Fe3 plus half reaction and not the Fe2 plus half reaction so if we go and find that on our periodic table there's the 2 plus there's the 3 plus all right if we 3 plus plus 3 electrons we get a value of negative 0 comma 0 6 okay so if we go back to our question so we have minus minus 0 comma 0 6 we end up with 1 comma 0 7 plus 0 comma 0 6 and we end up with an EMF of the cell therefore 
is equal to positive 1,13 volts. And that's our final answer there for that one. 8.5 seems to be the last question here. They say now that the BR2 B minus half cell is now replaced with the iodine. I2 goes to I to the minus half cell at standard conditions. Write the initial amateur reading. All right, so we have amateur reading. Will it, the initial amateur reading be higher or lower? when the I2 half cell is used. Explain the answer by referring to the relative strengths of oxidizing agents that are involved. Okay, so now we have to look at this the half reaction and the half cell uh, EMF value to compare these two. We know that this was positive 1,07. That's why I like using table 4A. So we go to table 4A. We found that BR was up here. And here's the iodine, I2 plus uh, two electrons gives us two Li, and we get a value of positive uh, 0.54, all right? And up the strength, and up the table, if we go from the bottom of the table up, we know we are increasing in oxidizing ability, okay? So here we've gone from 1.07, this was our initial half cell, and we've gone now to this half cell. We replaced it with this one. All right, we've replaced it with that one, the value of 0, 0.54. And they asked us, will the amateur reading, uh, just to go back to that question, will the amateur initial amateur reading be higher or lower when we employ this cell now instead of the BR2 uh, half cell? And the answer is definitely going to be lower. All right, and why is that? It is lower because, all right, we can put full sentences in here, because BR2, all right, is a stronger, all right, this substance is a stronger oxidizing agent, because remember, as we go up the table for A, our oxidizing agent strength, it increases. So it is a stronger oxidizing agent, all right, then iodine, okay, I2, all right, and that makes sense because if, because iodine's value, all right, cell potential value or EMF value on the table is lower than that of BR, of BR2. So we know that definitely the amateur reading will be lower as it is a weaker iodine, I2 is a weaker oxidizing agent than BR2. Or in the same breath, vice versa, BR2 is a stronger oxidizing agent than I2. With that being said, that wraps up question eight for this question paper. Stay tuned for the next video for question nine.